I'm Patrick Bailey with iQlist.com. Today is July 7th, 2020. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to split up an STL file using OpenSCAD. Okay, quite a while ago, it's like, well, July 21st, 2018, I put a video out here where I was figuring out how to do topographical maps. And so at the time, I, I figured out how to get uh, the Grand Tetons, because I used to live up in Idaho, and I could actually, where I used to live, I could... I could actually go down the road a little bit and I could see the Grand Tetons about 100 miles away, which is kind of, it's really pretty. Um, but anyway, so I showed how a couple different options on how to get topographical, topographical maps. And I'll put a link in the show notes here somewhere to this. But anyway, there's a lot of cool ways to 3 print topographical maps. And somebody just the other day, accreditation manager, posted, great video, thank you for sharing. Would it be possible to print the same area, but in multiple sections to make a larger finished model? Something about 600 millimeters by 600 millimeters. So that's, that's pretty big. Um, which got me thinking, what's the best tool to do that? You know, I was thinking, hey, take something like this and maybe cut along a grid pattern programmatically somehow. So then I could take the different sections and make them as big as I want. And then I could make a 600 by 600 meter. So I came up with, um, if you have an STL file, can you just upload it into OpenSCAD and split it up programmatically? And I went real quickly and figured that out. So right now, I'll put a link in the show notes. So on um, GitHub, I have a bit of code posted here as a gist. So you can go down there and download this, split up STL.SCAD. Um, and you can download this, open an op open SCAD and tweak it to your light and get going. So what I have, well, let me do two things. Let me show you what I was thinking. So one thing, no, we can ignore this because that was my test over here. Uh, the idea was you could take a model and make a grid and make a grid of different sizes. In this case, I was making a five by five grid. And so you'd make a five by five grid here, which would be 25 individual squares. And then I kind of did a little bit using a little bit of mathematics. How do I correctly choose the right one? And that way you could say, hey, give me number 11. And number 11 would know how to programmatically draw a square around there and erase everything else and then just have that piece. And then you can go, hey, give me 12, give me 13. And so bit by bit by bit, you can get every little piece you want. And then you have the STL files, then you can make them as big as you want and, and do it like that. So that's the general idea. Make some kind of grid. It can be as big as you want, or it can be four by four, three by three, six by six, whatever you want. And you can also set the size of the edges and then you can do the tweaks in the OpenSCAD to get that one section you want. So if I want to get, like I said, get this section, number seven, all I have to do is say, get me number seven, and it will render it for you. That's the idea. So anyway, there's the code, and you can take that, put an OpenSCAD, and if you do this, what you're going to, have to do is save this file to a folder. In that folder, you need to have the STL file that you want to split up. In this case, I have the grand, I have a folder, a file called grand underscore teton dot STL. That's the file I want to split up. And then what I'll, what you probably want to do first is say, uh, set just to split it true and split to false just to get started. And if I do that, do a quick render, it should just show me everything. So here is my Grand Teton file. So now, let me make this bigger. So now I can just look at my file and say, ah, oh, that's kind of cool. That's what I want. And then the next thing you want to do is set the adjustments on X, Y, and Z, kind of where you want it. And the idea is get it centered. Get it centered in the center X, Y, and also with the, let's see, where's my, right, and also in the Z, kind of try to get it as flat as you can right there. So once you have that all set up, and you're centered, then the next thing is you decide how long is an edge. And I know in OpenSCAD and in STL files, there is, they are unitless. They don't know millimeters. But it turns out the unit list number equates to millimeters. So we can just think in millimeters. So you choose, you set a size of an edge, 20 millimeters. You can change it to whatever you want. And then you figure out how many splits do you want? Do you want a five by five, a four by four? And change this to what you want. Right now I got a five. So it's gonna be five by five. It'll split this into potentially 25 parts. And then the rest of it, what you're going to do, next thing you'll do is come down here and choose which one you want. So we're doing five by five and I chose 12, which means it's going to grab that one. And then I can go through and choose one, two, three, four, get every single one I want. In fact, I'm not going to do it in this video, but you can, um, for those who are programmers, you can um, 
write a little bash code or something like that to actually programmatically render these. So you can actually pass in a one, a two, a three. You can pass in variables and have it auto render and just walk away and let it get the job done. Um, and if someone's interested in that, just post. Maybe you'll force me to make a video. I've made a video before on how to do it in general, but if you want this, eh, yeah, post. Maybe I'll make a video because it sounds like fun. So now that we've got that, the next thing you want to do is just display. We'll change that one to false. And if I do that, now that what that's going to do, and I'll hit the render here, it's going to move it. And so it moved it over here. I need to tweak that a little bit. And so what we're going to want to do is you want to get this as close to here. So here I've got 20. If I put a 10, it's going to overlap. And that's bad. If we want it to be in this quadrant. So you can kind of get, you can tweak this and get it as close as you want. See so if I can go 15 or something. But we want to make sure that it's past these lines. Well, it'd be really hard to get it precisely in the line, but you could. Because we're, that's, that's our split line. That's our furthest split line. And I'll put it back to 20 because that's what I was doing earlier. And then once I'm comfortable with that, I go, okay, that's fine. Then I will change my split to true because I want to do split it. And I'll say, hey, I'm going to get the 12th one. And now I'll render it and it should cut out that 12th piece. And there we go. There's my cutout. And then I can hit the render button here, which unfortunately takes a little bit of, takes a while. So I'll hit this render button. It'll take a while to correctly detailed render it. And after it's done rendering, you hit the STL file here, and then you can save it as an STL file. So I'll hit the render button here because maybe we'll actually, well, I've already done this one, so that's why I went fast. Okay, let me do uh, six, because that will go, or eight. That'll go, I haven't done that once. So it'll go slower. We'll preview it, render it. Okay, so now you can see down here I got this bar. It'll take a while to get all the way. But uh, just to show you what I did prior, I rendered a couple of them here. So here is the whole file. But here are two that I rendered, which I think were, I don't know, 18, 13. I forget which ones they were right now. But here's the two pieces. So now I can expand this piece out and make it ginormous. So I can say, you know, I want that to be 1,000 and or... That's probably a bit big, right? 500, and then boom, now I got my big piece. So I can do things like that and do exactly what he was suggesting. Split them up. I can split up as many as I want. It doesn't have to be five by five. I can do seven by seven. But now that I got those, you can see here's the individual ones, and these happen to border each other, and I can put them together. And you see these match up. So it is exactly programmatically split it up, which is kind of cool. And I think it solves the problem he was looking for. Now, the only issue with doing it this way is the timing. It's going to take a little while to render each one as it splits it up. Um, but like I said, if you if you want to do this a lot, you probably want to program it. You can And you can program this, write a bash script, boom, and make the file. So, see, it's still rendering, so it takes a while. But it does it perfectly, and you can walk away. So, just thought that was interesting. That was a great question. Got my mind thinking. And this is a nice way to split things up. If all you need to do is do a grid pattern and split it up like that. Anything beyond that, you probably want to use some different tools. But something like a map, it works really great. So anyway, lots of fun. Okay, the summer is plodding along. So right now with my backyard work, I'm probably not going to be able to do as many videos as I'd like. But I still think I've already got one idea for my backyard work that's probably going to turn into a video. So as I do my backyard and my landscape, and it cost me, you can't do as many videos. Just can't because uh, I got work to do, right? But I think there might be, a, there's at least one interesting idea I got that I've got on my brain now. And I bet you I'll have a few more by the time I am done to help me with my backyard construction. So bear with me at some point, you know, I'll try my best to try to get at least one video out a week if I can. But... I'm probably going to be a little low on the videos for a couple months, but eh, that's life.